Hello friends, welcome back to We Can Level Up. Today we are going to discuss about the 10th Standard Geography, first chapter Resource and Development. Let us start. Resources are everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our needs is called a resource and it should be technologically accessible, economically feasible and culturally acceptable. So it can be termed as a resource. Okay. Here it is the five important points related to resources. First one is everything available in our environment then which can be used to satisfy our needs and the and the third one is technologically accessible then fourth is economically feasible and last one is culturally acceptable here are some examples of resources that is minerals forest fossil fuels etc the another important thing related to resources are Interdependent relationship between natural technology and institution. Here the figure shows the relationship. Human beings are the center of the figure, the triangular figure. Here human beings interact with nature or physical environment through technology and create institutions. Once more human beings interact with nature through technology and create institutions and it accelerate their economic development. It shows the relationship between resource to development. Do you think resources are the free gifts of nature? No, resources are a function to human activities. We, the human beings, transform material available in our environment. That means any material available in our environment, rock, soil, forest, anything. Human beings transform these materials in our environment into resources and use them. These resources have a wide classification. Here our resources are classified into four ways. First one, on the basis of origin. On the basis of origin, resources are classified into two, biotic resources and abiotic resources. Biotic means living things. It includes plants, animals, fungus, bacteria, etc. And the abiotic resources means non-living resources. That means water, soil, air, minerals, etc. Here is the second classification of resources on the basis of exhaustibility. On the basis of exhaustibility, resources can be divided into two renewable resources and non-renewable resources. It is very very important. Renewable resources means it can be renew that means it can reproduce which includes solar energy hydropower wind energy etc so what do you mean by non-renewable resources it is just opposite to renewable resources that is it cannot renew it cannot renew and it cannot reproduce so the renewable, non-renewable energy resources includes oil, coal, natural gases, etc. Here the renewable resources are again divided into two continuous resources and biological resources. Continuous resources are also known as flow resources. It includes wind, water, etc. And the biological resources includes the natural includes the natural vegetation and wildlife. Natural vegetation means our forest, plants, grasslands, etc. Natural vegetation and wildlife. 
then in the case of non renewable resources it is also divided into two recyclable resources and non recyclable resources what do you mean by recyclable it cannot renew but it can recycle it can use again in another form example is metals metals can recycle and use it in another form then non recyclable which cannot recycle which can renew okay the non recyclable resources cannot recyclable and it includes the fossil fuels it cannot recyclable key okay. it cannot renew so renewable resources are divided into two continuous and biological and non renewable resources are also divided into two recyclable and non recyclable then our third classification that is on the basis of ownership on the basis of ownership resources can be divided into four first one is individual which means resources aren't privately or by individuals that means a resource owned by an individual that means house plots land ownership ownership of ponds wells etc are included in this category for example your house is owned by your father or mother or anyone else it's owned by a private individual so it is called individual resource then the second one is community resource these resource which are accessible to all members of the community here is an example public parks picnic spots playgrounds etc in an urban area are accessible in all people living there then third one is national resources national resources includes roads railways uh, buildings are constructed by government all these are national resources the nation has the legal power to acquire even private properties too all the minerals water resources forest wildlife land within the political boundary of a country can be considered as national resources here the oceanic area is also considered as a national resources that is the oceanic area up to 22 km or 12 nautical mile can be considered as resources then the international resources here is an important term that is exclusive economic zone what do you mean by exclusive economic zone it is the oceanic area beyond 200 nautical miles here the oceanic resources are strictly prohibited to exploit or utilized by individual countries and it is on or it is uh, fully controlled by international institutions no individual country can utilize these without the concurrence of international institutions okay it is the third classification of resources and the fourth one is on the basis of status of development resources are classified into four first one is potential resources potential resources are resources which are found in a region but have not been utilized here is an example the western parts of india particularly rajasthan and gujarat have a good resource of solar and wind energy but it cannot be developed properly so it cannot be used so it is called potential resources the second one is developed resources which means the resources are surveyed it is already surveyed and uh, we know its quantity and quality and how be determined for utilization it is called developed resources and the third one is stocks stock means minerals in the environment which have the potential to satisfy human needs but human beings do not have the appropriate technology to access those resources okay that means that resources 
can satisfy the needs of human beings but human beings didn't have proper technologies to access those resources reserves reserves are the subset of stock we know how to use it but their use has not been started these can be used for meeting future requirements here's an example river water can be used for generating hydroelectric power but presently it is being utilized only to a limited extent so the water in dams forest etc is a reserve which can be used in future here is the four classification of resources here we can start with the famous words of mahatma gandhi that is earth provides enough to satisfy every man's need but not any man's greed which means our earth provides enough resources to satisfy our need not any one's greed if any one overuse or over exploit resources it affects complete earth complete ecosystem and complete organisms of the earth do you think resources are the free gifts of nature no it is not but it was believed that resources are free gifts of nature as a result human beings over exploit those resources it creates many problems depletion of resources for satisfying the greed of few individuals and it causes the accumulation of resources in few hands that divide the society into two segments that is uh, rich or poor have or have not it is because of the accumulation of resources on few hands the over exploitation of resources causes global ecological crises such as global warming ozone layer depletion environmental pollution and land degradation an equitable sustainable distribution of resources are essential so the resource planning is essential for sustainable existence of all forms of life sustainable existence is a component of sustainable development resource planning is very very important for the country like india because of the diversity in availability of resources some regions of the india are abundant or self sufficient in availability of resources but some regions are not so the resource planning in india are very very essential resource planning is a complex process which includes identification of resources that means it includes surveying mapping quantitative and qualitative estimation measurement of resources all these are includes in identification of resources and the second one is evolving a planning structure that means which technology which skill is used to uh, set up that that the resource development plans and the third one is matching the resource development plans with overall national development plans which means this resource development plan should match with the overall development plan of the country india has made concerted efforts towards achieving the goals of resource planning right from the first five year plan launched after independence then the resource conservation the importance of resource conservation increases day by day to overcome irrational conception and over utilization of resources resource conservation at various level is important here you just recall the words of gandhi ji he placed the greedy and selfish individuals and exploitative nature of modern technology as the root cause of resource depletion at the global level he is against mass production and now we are going to discuss about different resources first is land resources land is a important natural resource which supports natural vegetation wildlife human life economic activities transportation and communication systems india has land under a variety of relief features namely mountains plateaus plains and islands 
and here the figure shows the important relief features of india in india 43% of land area is plain which provides facilities for agriculture and industries mountain area is 30% and the plateau is 27% and the plateaus are the rich reserves of minerals fossil fuels and fossils On the basis of utilization, land resources of India are classified into five. First one is forest, and the second is land not available for cultivation. That means land used to for other purposes, which includes barren and waste lands, land put to non-agriculture uses, that is, land used to for uh, constructing buildings, roads, factories, etc. Then the third is other uncultivated land. That means grazing land, land under tree crops, cultivable wasteland, etc. Then the fourth category is fallow land, which includes current fallow land and other than current fallow land. And the fifth one is net sown area. And it is the total or the gross cropped area of the country is called net sown area. Next topic is the land use pattern in India. The land use is determined by both physical and human factors. Physical factors include topography, climate, soil types, etc. And the human factors are population density, technological capability and culture, traditions, etc. Out of India's total geographical area, that is 3.28 million kilometers square, land use data is available only for 93% of it. Some areas of Jammu and Kashmir occupied by Pakistan and China have not been surveyed. Most of the land excluding the current fallow lands are either of poor quality or have very high cost of cultivation. The National Forest Policy of 1952 outlined that the 33% of geographical area should be forest area, but it is much lower than in reality. Land degradation is an important problem faced by the land resources in India. Human activities like deforestation, overgrazing, mining and quarrying are the causes of land degradation in India. To solve these problems, various steps to be taken. Main of them are afforestation and proper management of grazing. Land conservation is very very important and essential for the sustainable existence. In arid areas, land degradation can be checked by planting of shelter belts of plants, control on overgrazing and stabilization of sand dunes by growing thorny bushes. In industrial and suburban areas, land and water degradation can be reduced by proper management of wastelands, control of mining activities, proper discharge and disposal of industrial effluences and wastes after treatment. All these can prevent land degradation.